Hi guys and girls, this is Martin and welcome to another video of Astronomy for Beginners. Uh, today uh, we're going to describe about the, uh, the refractor uh, to beginners. All right. Basically a refractor is, is a lens type telescope. Basically it's a glass lens telescope. That's all it is. S a simple little device. All right. So just bear with me a minute, I want to just get over here. For those guys that I mentioned before I, I, on my last um, in, on the introduction, was um, I was always recommended a um, the binoculars before you starting off, which is true. But for some people, you know, for some people want to see a bit further. They want to see something a bit more spectacular, and uh, obviously people want to invest in a telescope. So um, to be honest with you. Um, the refractor, you can't go wrong with a refractor. All right. Um, there's three different types of refractor. You get an acromat, you get a uh, an ED or uh, extra dispersion, or you get an an, an ipo or triplet, also known as. All right. Both three types of telescopes are all um, you know they all offer the same sort of you know, different sort of quality between each other and the OC vary in prices as well. Alright, but before I go any further, um, an acromat is basically a lens element, a double lens element, alright, together. And um, from there, it's basically two lens elements, like a concave and a convex, usually, element. And what that does is, that element is to, um, obviously, refracts that light, collects the light and gets bent, bent through down the tube from to the end of this eyepiece here. All right, and that's and that's how it works. It's a really simple device. All right. Um, again, you've got the ED uh, expression glass. Um, only difference is, you know, it's it's a bit it's a bit more uh, well engineered glass. You know, very tested. <coughs> excuse me, tested to like minutes tolerance. All right, and, and made in a certain way. You know. And um, what that does, because it's a better glass, it eliminates uh, the false colour. Alright, I'll explain that later. Um, then you've got the other type, which is the apple, which is basically a free lens element. That's the only difference. And again, that will eliminate the false colour as well. But, okay, less on that in the for the time being anyway. Alright, we're basically going to focus mainly on the acro map. Alright, this is an acro map. All right, uh, this is a an 80 millimeter sky watcher. All right, it's been recommended for a lot of astronomy forums. All right, fantastic little scope. I agree, it's, it's it's good for a beginner, but um, again, like uh, again, it's a lens type. You take the juice it off, and you can see the lens here. Like that. Okay, simple device, easy, easy little device to use as well. All right. Um, Acromats, um, as I mentioned before, um, they are the cheapest range of refractors, right, for the price. Um, for your guys that are wanting, um, you know, hassle-free optics, collimation, basically hassle-free optics is basically optics that get misaligned if you're moving about. So if you go to a site or somewhere else, you know, you can observe the the optics tend to get misaligned or moved about. And what that does is, because it's been moved about, it will basically duplicate your image. Basically, your image will not will be, will be blurred or misaligned. You won't see it very well. Now, refractors don't suffer from that. In fact, refractors tend to hold the collimation. There's no collimation required, so there's no need of adjustment whatsoever. All right, solid tube. All right, and it's all sealed in. All right, so they're never gonna lose that collimation. All right. So that's why I know and buy a hassle free. Also, with hassle free, you know, it's also maintenance free. Well, to a, re a fair extent. All right, the lens element here, all right, from time to time will get a little bit dusty. But you know, providing you put the cap on when you're not using it and all that is fine. But well, usually, the only time I have to clean it just occasionally, that's just putting the cap on. But um, only requirement is what I my best advice is uh, I'll go, you know, is to do do any hardly any cleaning as possible because of the uh, the coatings and all. You don't want to scratch the coatings, so get to have it just not, you know, putting you know 
too much cleaning. You do not need to over clean, all right? If it's, it's, if it's really bad, you know, you only clean when you need to, all right? But I will cover that on a later tutorial on how to do it, all right? So, yeah, there's not much to do with the cleaning and all that. Um, again, uh, you get also with Acromat, because it's a, 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 a double uh, lens element, all right? The reason why it's a lens element is because it's basically to correct the light, all right, and it gets rid of the fourth colour. Now, because this is a short focus refractor, you can get long focus refractors. Uh, basically, uh, the longer the focal length, the more that less light um, or that co that colour gets uh, in the way. Now, short focus refractors will show more of that false colour. The longer refractors tend will have that false colour, but not that bad compared to a short focus. You know what I mean? Um, go through with long focus refractors. All right. Um, now a lot of people are a bit miffed on, well why go for a long, uh, long, long tube refractor? Well the reason is, is this, alright, if you're looking at a uh, refractor, alright, now you should have a label here, now obviously you can't go any closer but I'm going to do it for the camera anyway, but what you have here is when you get a telescope refractor you get the details like this, all right, um, you get a little level. The D also means the, the diameter or the aperture. All right, 80 millimeter. All right, the F is the 400 millimeter. All right, that's basically your fourth called length. That's what you're looking for. Reason why you want to check for the fourth called length is that the longer the focal length, you know, the more magnification you use. If you're using a short focus refractor, you're not going to get much magnification at a, at a telescope like this. All right. So if you put a 10 mil eyepiece on there, all right, and you want to work out the magnification, right? It's 400 divided by uh, 10 millimeter, and it'll give you round about 40 times. All right. Yeah, it's it's okay 40 times, but obviously longer the uh, focal length, the more magnification you get from that 10 mil eyepiece. All right. But we're going to deal with the eyepieces anyway. But um, usually, I'll look, always look for like um, when you buy. A refractor make sure it's got coated optics at least you can get fully multi coated or fully coated all right this is coated optics but some some brands would be higher you know always look for fully coated or as long as it's got some kind of coatings in there you look you know you're looking you know, at a really good refractor all right okay um again as I said mentioned before the refractor is just a basic tube the lens and it gets magnified and uh, also refracted back through an eyepiece end, alright? Okay, that's all it is. You know, you have the a dust cap, the dew shield, it keeps off the moisture off the lens. Uh, this bit here is a little bracket where you can put fit a finder scope on there. So you, it's basically a small telescope with a sighting across here, and with that there, it allows you to uh, aim the telescope, the main telescope. Along the tubes, it will be inside for that. So basically, it's like a like a like a, like a sight on a gun or something, you know. Um, again, got your focuser, which is a rack of pinion, simple device, up and down. So right, and then this bit here is usually on some telescopes you get a uh, a locking knob so you can so you just throw the focus out. Now some uh, some attachments will allow you to fit uh, 1.25 inch uh, eyepieces. Some refractors will allow you to fit two inch eyepieces. Or, or diagonals. All right. Usually, uh, when you're using refractors, you know, for visual, I always recommend you to use a, a diagonal so that you don't have to bend your neck and all that when you try to look up the stars and all. So always try to get a mirror diagonal. All right. This one only accepts 1.25 uh, inch uh, mirror, uh, diagonal mirrors and eyepieces only for this one. However, on this thing it has a uh, thread. Basically, this little thread here allows you to fit a T-mount or camera adapter on there, so you can actually connect a camera with this one. All right, very little, very good little scope indeed. Um, like I said, we've got Acromats. Um, I mean, I've used Acromats before. Um, I'm not a big refractive person myself. I, I use these purposely for uh, as a guide scope, really, for guiding. All right, but I'm not going to go into that too much. Alright, um, things with refractors, what you've got to look out for, you know, for a beginner, you know, my personal experience with refractors is, I, I, you know, you don't need to go for a really expensive uh, refractor, alright, 
But I will say one thing is when you're looking for a refractor, I would seriously go for something like a three inch to four inch refractor. The reason for that, I mean, you can get smaller refractors, but they don't tend to have the much light graphs. Basically, what I mean about three to four inch of, um, aperture is basically bigger that diameter of that mirror or the lens, the more light you can collect. It's all about light gathering, all right? And that's what we're looking for, all right? You're not looking for magnification, you're looking for light gathering, all right? And what this does is the, more, the bigger that diameter, the more light you can get and the more you see. And that's the, the idea, all right? Now, you can get small refractors around about um, 50 to 60 millimeter, but to be honest with you, I've, with my personal belief, you know, I've used them. Now, I used to own one, I used to own a Tasco many, many years back when I was a young boy. All right, they do the job, but they don't sh give you the wow factor, you know, they don't give you the enough, you know, they go okay for the moon and, and the planets maybe, but you don't get a lot of detail and, and stuff that you get through a 60 mil. You know, they're okay, but to be honest with you, if you know, if you guys, you know, if you're saving up, I would suggest save as much pos possible money you can and go for a decent size refractor, all right? All right? And with that is go for three inch or more, all right? Three to four inches is my recommendation. But you can go centimillimeter, which is slightly smaller than a three inch, but it's just as good. It's better than a 60 mil by a long way, all right? And you know, they'll show you more than a 60 mil. All right, um, fingers with refractors, because I mentioned before, hassle-free optics and all that. You know, idea for a beginner, absolutely brilliant. And this, these instruments are usually mainly used for uh, mainly the moon and planets. And you can use them from double star study as well. Um, also, if you're living in an area where there's a lot of light pollution as well, you know, if you're living near the city or all that, and uh, go through metal refractor, they will offer you the, the you know, will lower the light pollution down to a certain level, all right? All right, simple to use, quick and easy to set up, and the light pollution won't be as severe, all right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna use it for that, I would definitely use it for, for the moon and planets, if you live in town there. However, you can use them for deep sky observing, like looking at galaxies and nebula, all right? You can use it for that, all right? Uh, but you have to go for a deep sky, uh, a deep, basically a dark sky site, basically somewhere in the field, somewhere where there's no light pollution, away from city lights and all that. You can use them, and they will show. You know, I've, I've seen Andromeda Galaxy with this uh, telescope, believe it or not, and with some quite good detail as well, all right? And the, even the little companion as well, an M32, I believe, even shows in this scope. Um, again, mainly refractors are brilliant because of the rate, uh, basically, because of the no obstruction on the lens or the object objective, they provide the sharpest views of any instrument. And it is true what they say. Because of the no obstructions, looking at the planets and the moon, you're looking at crisp. Crisp per, per, uh, performance side. Uh, the only downside is because of the limited aperture. All right, and you know when you you can get uh, refractors from from 60 mil all the way up to a six inch, but I've seen some bigger, but then you end up paying thousands of pounds, which you know not an ideal sort of thing for me. Um, this is good for the acromat because of the false color. All right, what I meant by false color is. When you look at an object, say like the moon, uh, basically uh, the light gets collected for this lens, and you've got like the red, the blue, and the green uh, white uh, wave light wave patterns that get uh, refracted through to a single point. And what that does is, is uh, from that single point, is it's not all focused in the same point. So basically, whatever you're seeing, like the moon, you might see a, a slight hint of paper halo around around the moon. All right. Don't let that discern you, right? Okay, um, that's fine for visual, absolutely fine. All right, and don't let it bother you. All right, and um, for beginners, you know, the only time it will bother people is when um, you try. You can take photos for this, all right, and do uh, CCD imaging. But the thing is, with the false color, it ruins the image's quality. So you start getting the false color and all that on the images, which you don't want. However, for visual, the acromat is absolutely perfect. 
Right? It's cheap. It's one of the cheapest. I mean, the cheapest telescope, one of the cheap telescopes you can buy at this price range. You know, the Acromax the cheap, cheap end of the, the refractors, but offer good, good views. All right. I mean, here we're talking around about 120, maybe 130 pounds for this one. All right. Just for the tube, like. Now, obviously, as you go bigger in aperture or the diameter of the size of the lens, the more it's going to cost. All right. And I say, uh, good three, four inch you can't go wrong. All right. And you can get some good, decent refractors out there on arms in the market. Right, the only best advice is when you're selecting a uh, refractor, alright, as if you're going to buy a refractor as your main in instrument of choice or weapon of choice, some people like to call it, alright, um, I would not buy from a wholesale uh, retailer. You know, go to a shop that specialises um, astronomical equipment. Astronomy shops, go to the places like that. They're all scattered about in the UK. All right, and you can get, you know, there's, you know, you can get really good advice. You can look at the equipment, test the equipment out, and and see what you can buy. And the people there will advise you what you want. All right, what you want to buy, and within try and do it within your budget as well. All right, but I really stress that go to a proper astronomy shop without a doubt, because you will not get ripped off if you buy it from like. Uh, some of the like wholesalers or catalogs, something like that, you'll buy telescopes of rubbish quality. I mean, really rubbish. And the reason why I'm talking about rubbish quality is uh, you can buy a refractor and it might not be an acromat, it'll actually be a single lens element, which basically what that does is it introduces false colour and you can get them. All right? So be careful, make sure you, what you're buying is an acromat uh, refractor. All right? That's why I go to the telescope shops and they will advise you, the, you know, what you're looking for. A lot of their equipment is good equipment anyway, for the beginner. And you're guaranteed what you're buying is what you pay for. Alright? Um, again, from the reseller, or obviously the retailers, when you, you know, keep away from telescopes that offer high magnification, alright? And what I'm talking about high magnification is something like 300, 400, 500 times ramification, or even 600 times for a 60 millimeter refractor, for example. Keep away from scopes like that. All right? They offer this ridiculous amount of ramification. All right. A good general rule when using a ramification is is every 50 times of ramification per inch of aperture. Basically, for example, this telescope is 80 millimeter, which is about 3.1 inch inches like and basically that 50 of that of those inches you're talking about 150 times 160 times modification is the maximum limit you can look at the telescope um, but anyway as I said before keep away from telescopes that offer this ridiculous modification including the price also the thing is um, they offer horrible mounts as well so keep away you know, from you know, from them because the mounts are not as good, and if the mounts not very good, and if, you know, basically the tripod and the mount, if they're not very good and they're wobbly, you know, you're not going to see much at all. And it's a shame really because what you find you get some good scopes, but with rubbish uh, mounting. So if the mount's not good, you're not going to see much at all. So you need a sturdy mount, and I really stress that. Right, it doesn't matter what telescope you fit on there, or that, if you haven't got a sturdy mount or a tripod. You know, you you're not gonna see peanuts out of it. Alright, um okay, um from there as I said before, keep away from this ridiculous amount of aperture, wobbly mounts, um and also what you find out you will get the cheap eyepieces as well and the eyepiece quality on them, you know. Um a lot even in some of the good telescopes you're still gonna get cheap end eyepieces with them with the thing. What I suggest is obviously buy an, uh, an eyepiece uh, collection of your own and get some decent eyepieces because believe it or not, the eyepieces also um, determines the performance of the scope. So if the lens, the objective lens here is really, is really good, but the eyepiece is usually poor quality and you're not going to see as much as, as you expect it to, to go. But um, like I say, go for an Acromat 
three to four inches of aperture, no less, then go for a 60mm box or instrument. I would adopt for a 70mm if you're on a low budget. Go for a good size 70mm refractor and you can't go wrong if you're on a low budget. But to answer, go straight to 3 to 4 inches and you're looking a good size. You can get bigger and that's when prices go up because true about refractors is because of the design you have to grind the lenses and all that, they cost more money to machine and all that. That's why they're such a higher price tag. Now, Acromaps are not so expensive, right? But this is when I go to this one in detail. Right. This is a Lunt. All right. This is an ED Apple. And uh, basically, this is a doublet again. Similar to Acromat, but the difference is it's made in such a way the glass that it's highly machined and it's highly tested. So basically, you're going to get high quality images but with uh, obviously uh, we know with false colour at all alright hence the reason the price goes up alright so, and it, it's all to do with that now if you go from the Apple which is all the tri uh, triplet and the three lens elements it's even more expensive that you know, a, price, a scope like this will cost around about 400 to 500 pounds in the UK I was lucky, very extremely lucky, that I was in Canada at the time and I saw this scope in a particular shop and because of the, uh, it's cheaper out there, it is cost me £266 which is an absolute bargain for a, an, an instrument of this quality and to be honest with you, I've looked through it and it gives out astounding views All right? but um, like you say, the price tag is expensive £266 is a lot, I mean you can get a uh, that one with the mount of all that price included, but this one is specifically for a certain purpose. Now, the reason why you use our iPhones and all that is photography or imaging, and that's why you need the high quality glass. And that high quality glass will enable you to take excellent images without the false color, all right. And that's where it is. Now, you don't, you know, if you're a beginner and you just want to use it for visual, then go for an Acromat. But if you're one of these guys who want to spend a little bit of money and you want to use it for visual and uh, and use it for other things like the imaging, then yeah, go for an, uh, uh, an ED. Um, I can't see the, the reason to go for an Apple, uh, a triplet, because um, you're talking really expensive prices and to answer you, I can hardly tell any false colour with this even from the body eye and this is a really good telescope for the price again it does have its slight differences right it has a sliding dew shield all right back and forth all right nice little feature still got the score rings on a dovetail bar this dovetail bar can be fitted on quite a few mounts all right equatorial mounts all right um, it has a focuser, which is a creasing focuser. It's not like the rack and pin you see over there. All right, this has a, a rack. Uh, this is a, a creasing, which is a lot smoother uh, focuser. All right. Uh, also, it has a 10 to 1 fine tune here. All right, and that allows you allows you to have fine focus, ultra fine focus. All right. Um, again, the whole focuser can actually tilt as well. And it also has the attachment where you can fit an uh, inch and a quarter or 1.25 eyepieces from there, all diagonal, or you can fit two inch eyepieces. Again, see how the difference. Reason, you, know, you, know, you can use bigger eyepieces and all that, alright? But uh, really, you, this scope is really made for use for uh, imaging, alright? Imaging or photography, but for, for beginners, you know, you can still get away with imaging with an Acromat, all right. But if, if that if that false cover bothers you, then yeah, get an ED Apple, all right. But for this sort of price, you can't go wrong, all right. But it is expensive, and it's you know, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner to initiate. You know, but as you progress into astronomy and you start learning the skies and all that, and you want to take something out then by, by means get an iPhone where I don't or, or an ED but again you know same sort of features and all that but uh, the quality is so much uh, a difference like again as I mentioned before um, 
Some refractors will accept, uh, accept two, you know, two-inch eyepieces, right? Now a lot of people say, well, why go for bigger eyepieces when the the inch and quarter does fine? Well, I said, well, yeah. But the thing is, if you fit bigger uh, eyepieces, they're really good for deep sky objects. So basically, all your, you know, if you fit the diagonal mirror there, basically you're collecting more light from the lens, and what that does is enables you to see the, the galaxies and nebulas pop out just a little bit brighter. You know what I mean? So it does help you see a little bit more. So that's the reason why you use bigger eyepieces. But you don't have to use them, by all means, alright? And uh, inch and quarter is, is completely fine, and you just see it just as well from these um, uh, from these scopes. Like I said before, what I also forgot to mention is because of the size, I mean, a good eight, a four inch um, refractor, alright? The uh, they're actually quite portable as well. So, as well as collimation free, um, virtually, you know, little maintenance is required, and they're easy to scope, razor sharp images, you know. They're also very portable as well, and you can put this in, you know, a rucksack or something like that and take it around with it, you know. I mean, this, this, um, this lump actually comes with its own case. So I can carry it around if I go out, uh, you know, abroad or something. I can take the case with the telescope in there. But this is this is my main uh, portable uh, Im imaging uh, scope. But as I said before, you know, both are uh, a good quality telescopes, no matter what. All right, one's obviously slightly better than the other, slightly, but it's it's not much difference. All right, all you're paying is for the quality of the lenses. This will just show as much as that one. There's hardly any difference, all right. Again, this is used for photography mainly, and this is you can use for, for visual. Visual is fine. Acromat, without a, without a question, you can't go wrong, all right. Um, like I say, uh, if there's any questions that you'd like to ask us, or you can join us on Facebook because we have got a, uh, a showing for beginners uh, forum, and there uh, you can find us there. Ask, feel free to ask myself or, or Simon. All right, and we're quite happy to help you out. All right, um, not here to sell items to you or nothing like that. We're just here purely just to offer any advice, any questions that you're not sure of. Feel free to ask us. All right, we'll be there to try and help you out. Okay. Um, like I say, the uh, next uh, video will be uh, reflectors or Newtonians, and we'll see you then. Goodbye.